Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cutshaw with Real Things Living. Today, my guest is Tomer Alpert. He is the founder of Felt App, and he founded that business because he wanted to, people to connect with each other and to feel special. And this is what we need in this world right now. Can you say hi, Tomer? Hello. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate you taking the time. And I think what you're doing is so beneficial for people. People don't realize how much um, we need each other, right? We we tend to isolate ourselves when we're going through issues. And especially, you know, if you're having um, self-worth I should, thoughts or, or mental health issues, can you tell me what started, you know, you to go down this path of felt app? I'm sure it had some connections to great stories. Yeah. Well, following the theme of perseverance, I started a business with my dad, which um, was a great experience and also not a healthy work environment for us. And so I made the really tough decision to leave the business that I helped start out of apartments. And, you know, we got lots of great war stories, but we built this multi-million dollar business. But I decided to leave it. Um, you know, I was early 20s then. And the perseverance side of that is, is it was the first time, I think, consciously in my life that I chose to follow, you know, quote unquote, my heart. But really what I was doing was I, was I was going into the fear of the unknown. And there was so much fear about leaving this business that was paying me money and that I had built. And I had all these conflicting thoughts, right, and, and analysis that I was trying to do. And I was so mired and bogged down in, in it all. And, you know, I, 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 you know, the classic story of following that little beacon of light. Right. Know, out of that really dark mental state when I was just trying to figure everything out. And that put me on this path. So I, I chose to leave the business, made the hard decision to do that. And um, my partner at that point in time, we decided to move to Colorado. And there in Colorado, we got pretty isolated. You know, we, we were living in a small mountain town and it was hard to make friends. And also, you know, I felt so out of place. I was living in this beautiful place that I dreamt of living my whole entire life my whole entire life born and raised, raised in texas always dreamt of living in colorado now i was there and i could not feel more unworthy oh wow of of my own dreams and that's what led to me not making friends so cut to the chase what happened is we got invited to a dinner party and well i gotta back up a second because there's a good, great part to this story so two weeks before this dinner party I am in a super deep, anxious place. I mean, hard to leave the house, talking to my GoPro at night because I'm like just in panic mode and I'm with my partner and I don't want to continue to bother them. And and I and it was because I had gotten let go from a job. So I took a job to Colorado with me. They said, move back to Texas or we got to let you go. Oh, wow. Followed my heart, decided to stay in Colorado. But then I, had no, I, then I was in this terrible panic of not having an income. And I was pretty, you know, ignorant, I guess. I didn't know about Social Security. So the point is, for, for probably a week, I was in total panic mode, couldn't sleep well at night. Then I realized, found out, discovered about Social Security, looked into it, knew I could get an income started, felt relief that day. That literal day, we got invited to a dinner party. We go to the dinner party. On the way home, my partner's like, hey, we should send him a thank you card. And I was like, totally. That sounds great, but stores are closed. There's, but there's got to be an app. And this is back in 2012. And there were apps, but they only let you type. Uh -huh. They would they, You could type your message. They printed a mail it for you. And I was like, there is no way we're sending a typed thank you card. Right, we're gonna handwrite it. That'd be handwritten thank you card. And I grew up not sending cards back and forth, but I grew up sending notes in school. And I would spend time writing letters, notes to my friends, and I loved it. But to me, the act of handwriting, the time, the attention, the penmanship, the 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 whole embodiment of the thought and the 
attention you were giving is what it was all about. So I could not imagine typing a card. And I have, we have typing and felt, you can type cards. So no hating on typing, but you can also draw smiley faces, circle words and add your own flair. And I am a hardcore, authentic person. Genuineness is my, probably should be my first name because I cannot do not genuine. <laughs> so long story short, on the way back, after finally, you know, getting out of this deep, 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 anxious state um, because social security. So I, I, what do you call it? when I get, you know, I, I honor our social system in, in, in the United States because I am an, an example of how it can uh, truly help, you know, bring relief. And then through relief, you can be creative right. and you can follow passions and pursuits. Right. That is uh I mean, that's a great little intro story you have there. That is, you re, you kept using the word felt. I noticed that you you felt this or felt that, and then your company is called Felt. And so, how yeah. long after that yeah. dinner? I'm assuming that's when it popped into your head later, like you said, to create this app with that's not just typing. And did you have to? I'm assuming hire someone to help create this app. I'm yeah. Assuming. So early, early on, I just wanted something to pay the bills because we yeah. lived in a ski town. So I just wanted to, I, I was like, Oh my gosh, this could be my business that I build. Right. That could, I could print, I could print these cards and mail them out of our living room. I literally bought a printer oh, and wow. I researched printers. Yep. I researched printers. Like I'm going to buy a printer. I'm going to do this all over the house. I need to do 50 cards a day, cover the rent and I can ski. Right. That was my mindset. <laughs> and, and then early, 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 so I hired, you know, I, I didn't make, I, we were not building a world-class startup. We were building something for Tomer to live in a ski town. And, and then I remember one day I was just like, I'm, I'm going to blow this up if I don't do this better, because this is, this has a lot more legs than just Tomer's, you know, $200 a day, like uh, pay my rent sort of business. And what I realized was, I needed to to bring in engineers to uh, specifically that knew what they were doing. At that point, I had just like found a quick engineer. He was building it all wrong. And um, so we spent a year um, going from idea all the way to launch. And what I knew, though, in my heart was the handwriting had to be beautiful. If you didn't like the way if, it, if you know, if we, if you went to go handwrite and felt because you, you're, you're using your finger using a stylus, you're, you you know, or an Apple pencil or whatever you want to use. If you go and do that and it looks like a credit card machine, right? The jaggedy lines, right. that would be a deal breaker. It would yeah. be a deal breaker for me. Yeah. So, so we spent a year building the, the platform, but also a lot of that time was built, uh, was spent making the handwriting code, make beautiful handwriting and, and it's authentic. You go and write, you get what you what you write. If your, your handwriting style. looks bad, it's going to yeah. look bad and felt. Yeah, <laughs> but it's your style. Yeah, it's great though, right? It's because it, it, it doesn't. You know, this is my personal opinion. It doesn't matter how it looks. What you matters did. is you did it exactly. You took the time. You went through whatever because it's you. That's what matters, right? When I get it, I know you made it. I don't care if you typed it and then signed your name to it, circled some things, drew a smiley face. That goes, there's two things that make felt work. And when I say work, what I mean by that is when I send you a felt card and you get it, you feel special to me, right? It's about making each other feel special to one another. It's, we have connections. Connections exist. They're never going to go away. We're connected. We're interconnected. Connections exist. You know, you can't break them. What you can do though is put energy into them. You can put fuel into them. You can nurture them, right? So that there's actual vitality in the connection. And I think one of the most like fundamental um, sort of state of mind is knowing that I'm special to you, knowing that I matter to you. And we're in, we're, we're in this place, an interesting place, I think, culturally, where we're starting to pivot and move out of this place where I need to be special and important, thus I broadcast myself to my audience as a you know as an everyday person. That's what I have to do. I have to build a facade, put out an image that is broadcast worthy, and I think that's obviously very harmful 
right? To wake up every morning and feel like I have to be broadcast worthy. And what I believe is we're shifting. We're coming out of that place and we're moving into a, a, back into this knowing that I just need to know that I matter to my people. Right. I, and, and so that's what it felt about. I like the aspect of, even though it's on an app, you're still writing with your style, with, like you said, a stylist. And I think some people, I love getting, like I, I mentioned before we got on this call, I love getting cards, especially if they've got handwritten note. Um, that to me, I know it just means more to me um, emotionally <laughs> for some reason. And I think you're you're obviously the, the, the same way. And I also noticed I was reading that cursive is coming back. They stopped teaching cursive, right? I used to be a really good, I'm sorry, I'm going off topic here. I used to be really good at handwriting, but when the internet came and you're typing all the time, you lose that skill. So this to me is a great way to practice as well. You know, your, your skill um, for handwriting. It's just, I think that's important. I don't think that should go away. And I love how you incorporated that. Because you felt it, you knew it, right? Plus, well, use the word felt. <laughs> I know. Watch now. Now we're going to use it all, all the whole, whole podcast. Yeah, That's I okay. mean, I, I, I knew it, but I, but I, you know, here's the message: is I was following my own genuine desire. I love that. If I, yeah, if I wasn't Tomer and I was, I hated handwriting. It'd be all typing. Maybe the guys and girls and people who invented the other apps didn't care about handwriting and that's right. great they don't care. right they you don't care find, so. yeah your audience will be people who who wants to make it more personalized and i think it's a great to send these cards to people uh randomly too i should say randomly but thank you cards just to let people know yeah i do well send, you know you know i gotta just jump in so randomly i think we should stop and talk about that i love that yeah Tell me what you meant. Tell you tell me. What do you think? What does random mean to you? Now, what does random what you mean, mean to you? Right. Well, okay. I think <laughs> what it means is spontaneously. Yeah. Yeah. Spontaneously. You know, we have a saying it felt being so spontaneously thoughtful. You know. As you're saying this, I think I I get a card in the mail that has nothing to do with the holiday or my birthday or wedding anniversary. I'm like, that just to me, I mean. It's still nice getting those other cards, but that one's just like, well, they were thinking of me, right? And that's why you want to pay back. And I think that's why it's helping people feel special. And and like you'd mentioned, you followed your heart, your, which I think is important. And that's what we need we more of. And you were brave, obviously, doing that. And I think it's well, and accolades for that. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. We as a as a culture... Our, 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 you know, we always have the ability to change, right? Because yes. who's we are the culture, right? Right. So, yeah. So we get to set the culture, and the culture that I'm, you know, a small little kernel of sand on, is the culture of what you are excited about is right. It's what you're right. excited about is right. Go Correct. do that. What what you're excited about? There is there is no more rightness than excitement. I when you're excited about something, that makes it right. But that's why I that's why I write <laughs> because it gets me excited, and I think that's as a child I was that way as well. And um, yeah, but then you're my generation growing up, like, well, you need to go get a degree in like finance. I'm like, well, that's so boring. Um, <laughs> Exactly. I, I thought it was so I mean whatever if someone likes it great but it wasn't don't you shouldn't tell younger people um what they need to do to be successful because only they know in their like you said what gets them excited and they're going to put the energy into it well and success right the word success right needs to be and is and here's the thing right we are back then that might have been culturally appropriate because maybe yes. we needed to get to this place that we are today but today is today and today yeah. you can do what you want and when i say want i mean excited about it. i don't mean like oh i want to sit on my couch all day long right, right. because i'm because i'm terrified that's that's, different. that's why that's yeah. different what i'm saying is what excites you 
which is a feeling, an emotion, which is so vital. It is the vitality. When you follow your excitement, you're literally, you know, the classic pursuing what your heart desires. But it's so much more tangible when, you know, this has been taught to me. When you think about following what excites you, it can be moment to moment. Do I want a cup of coffee or do I want to go have a cup of water? What excites me the most? Sometimes a cup of coffee lights me up. Like <laughs> the thought of it lights me up and I just go and I do that. And then what you end up finding is that synchronicities begin to appear. When you follow excitement, you're almost in the path that the universe is cradling for you. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. And so then what happens is synchronicities begin to show up. So following your excitement is, is a much more interconnected um, sort of direction we can all take by following what lights us up, excites us, even moment to moment, day by day. That's how you do it. You don't just sit there because, you know, you could hear hearing this and be like, oh, I need to go journal about and find my life's passion. The way you actually do it is moment to moment, day by day, questioning this decision or that decision, what excites me the most, beginning that internal process of listening to your own intuition, because it all comes from intuition. Right. So really following excitement is an internal shift, you know, from externally looking like, oh, what are they going to like? If I do this, how will I get accepted, right? And all this different external validation, you shifting from an external to internal mindset and stance, what excites me between a cup of coffee and a cup of water right now, right here. And that, that is a deep practice that has, yeah, it's brought a ton of, you know, energy into, into my life. Well, it's, you're, you're slowing down and listening to yourself. That's kind of how uh, there's a lot of advice out there in the past, but you got to go go big or or, hurt or not. You just got to do one step at a time. That's what you're doing each day at a time, each moment at a time, right? And yeah, that, each moment at a time. And that's kind of how you move forward. And then you'll learn, I think, a slower process. You'll learn and how to, you're going to have to pivot sometimes. You can't always write that one straight path. You got to, does that make sense? <laughs> you, you, you've got to, and change is normal. And I think going slower will help you adjust to a change that, that you're going to be facing. Well, you know, what happens to me is I find myself sometimes looking for a validation, some point of validation, right? right. Did I do this right enough? Am I on the right thing? Am I right? Mm -hmm. You know, am I, is my existence even right? And following my excitement, again, it's a process. So the process of even looking for what I'm excited about, like this morning, I was doing customer support, answering customer emails, it felt. And, and I had our podcast to, to, to get on and, and talk with you. And I knew that I was feeling not in alignment, right? Something was off. I felt bad. And, and then I quickly went into, man, I'm a failure. Like I just, that's what happens to me. I go from like, Oh, this, is how I feel to like, everything's, everything is disturbed. Not, you know, cause I feel this, this bit of offness and what I was able to then do. And because I've been doing this is more of a habit now. Like, well, what am I excited about right now? Right. I'm not excited to sit here and answer emails anymore. I'm not feeling excited <laughs> here. <laughs> so I went and actually like sat down you know, on the floor in a bit of a meditation sort of place, but just, just sat down. Right. And I said, well, what am I excited about? And nothing really lit me up. So I just sat there and I thought about, well, should I go and research, right? This, this podcast and should I do, should I do work? <laughs> and it wasn't, and that, that wasn't exciting. So then I, I, what felt a little bit more exciting was just to continue chilling right there. So I did. And then I had this freaking thought that I wanted to share with you because I, we don't know each other that well. So I was like, well, I could go research and, and learn and know, which felt like this work cultural, you know, sort of mentality, go work, go research. If you don't know what to do, go, go work. Right. Right. But I, but I didn't. So then I had this, this thought, which is we're God talking to each other. We're, we're God talking to itself 
right. themselves, itself, whatever. <laughs> like that's what's going to happen today. So what am what what do I have to worry about or research about? It's God talking to itself. I was like, it. I mean, so moments like that are what I'm having more of, which are, you know, they're enlightening. They're and they lighten up my body, my right. beingness. The stress, right? <laughs> yeah. I, yes, exactly. And and I think you just said, I went from a place of like super stressed out, couldn't even like really orient to using this process of looking for what excites me, which just by the minuscule difference between like sitting there asking support emails or going to research or just city, even sitting down on the floor. <laughs> minuscule. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I came to, and uh, you know, I came in contact, which is how I like to, how I believe ideas happen. I came in contact with this idea, right? I didn't think it up. I didn't conjure it. I didn't work at it. I align, I put myself right in the place where this idea was, right? My frequency, my energy, whatever you want to think about it, was in the same plane as that idea. And that idea unlocked me. Right. Then I came and set up my studio and like, I knew that I was just God talking to God. Like what? I, I, it's going to be great. Who cares? Who cares? I, I agree with that. I don't, I don't, I used to in the past get caught up in being perfect on everything. It, it doesn't matter. And I like how you use the word authentic. You want to be authentic. I believe in that too. And I recently saw, I don't know where I read it. But Merriam-Webster Dictionary says authentic is their word of the year. <laughs> Isn't that kind of cool? I saw that on the news too. It was on I, the news, like NPR or something. They talked about Right. That. I think that's, that's so true because we all just try to make everything perfect, which I think holds you back and you're not going to be yourself. You're not going to, I mean, you want to be kind, but I'm saying you have to be yourself and not try to do what others want. And then you're following your, I think you're following your heart, like you said, and that's what gets you moving forward, step by step, moment by moment. And I think your story is very inspirational. I love it. Well, I heard I heard this thing that that is fitting. It's it, it feels so small, maybe, but but it's so huge. Which is our mission in life is to be ourselves yes that's perfect that is i a, mean yeah i couldn't believe it I, when i heard it that that's where i, I wanted what i want to say about it is I, when i heard that from from this you know spiritual person that i really admire i just couldn't believe it because for me that has been my like single most known missing experience that's a, it's a, is being myself who said that i'm just curious i know you said it's someone you admire i'm just curious who said that or uh, a person called bashar. bashar if you look up youtube yeah he's a channel well daryl ankle is the cha is the the human being okay bashar if you ever heard of esther hicks yes i've heard of or like the secret those type of yeah those type of things. Bashar is who I, I was introduced to him by a good friend. And if you YouTube Bashar, Bashar, you can, you can find them. And I just, the amount of resonance that I felt when I first started listening to the wisdom was nothing. It felt more uh, resounding with me. So right. Bashar is who said that. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of his name too. I, there's so much info out there, but I, I'm on YouTube a lot too. I like to, I've, I've caught myself looking for people that, you know, that's just kind of how we're going down this. I don't think it's bad, but following, like you said, be yourself, be authentic. I think it, it seems well, though, like, wow. <laughs> the, and the, the bigger message that it ties into is we are all you know, incarnations of the one energy source, right? Energy right. is energy. We're energy. So we're all individual, but incarnations of energy, right? And if we are ourselves, 
then we're fitting into the bigger picture, right? right. More, more precisely. But yeah. in our culture, as we need for acceptance and we have celebrity culture and we have to look like this and act like that and things are acceptable, things aren't acceptable. You know, ultimately you feel like you cannot, should not either be, you know, I had this, this is a, you, you, I heard this thing. If you, the tallest poppy is the one that gets his head chopped off. Oh and, wow! And in in, in, a, in a poppy seed field. Right, 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 right. What, but then, I mean, when I heard I heard that at a retreat actually recently. When I heard that, I was like, God, that is why I have not and do not. Whether it's in a group of friends, whether it's board night, <laughs> that is my entrapment. Right. If I feel if I am myself, I will get my head chopped off. Right. Either because people will make fun of me because I will be an easy target for for this, that or the other. And my feelings get hurt because I didn't have a stable base of love to go. You know, I, yeah, I didn't have that sense of security as a kid. All these different reasons. But that is it. The toppest poppy gets his head chopped off. <laughs> but I know. And in the other side, the goal of life is to be yourself right you know, and that and and that is this beautiful challenge that i uh wake up with every single morning every single morning currently right now it's i need to go be more creative for felt i need to make these videos i need to tell the story in a better way i need to do all these bigger better things and it is like this slow pressure build for me <laughs> ultimately le leading to like i suck i'm a failure I shouldn't be running felt. I'm not doing it. You know, I'm not. And that's the challenge. It's like I'm living human being with thoughts, opinions, cultural influences, all the soup ingredients, right? And at the same time, I know the one thing is to be myself. And I can feel the freedom, right, within that idea. And so it's all this magical challenge to live through. And that's what makes life worth living. It's not that I excel and succeed and, and, and achieve. Because here's this, I had this, I had this other epiphany the other day, which was feeling unworthy is unconditional. What that meant to me was, because I was in this state of like, God, I feel like sh crap. I feel like crap about myself. What do I need to do? And then it came to me, you feeling like crap is unconditional. I'm like, okay, it's <laughs> unconditional. It doesn't freaking matter. It's right. unconditional. I'm going to feel like crap if I succeed. I'm going to feel like crap if I fail. I'm going to feel like crap if I sit. I'm going to feel like crap if I stand. It doesn't matter what I do. That is actually the keys out of the jail cell. There's nothing to do. It doesn't matter. There's nothing to do. It's not a one plus one equals two. It's a one plus one equals one. It doesn't matter. You're right. always going to feel like it regardless of what you do. So who cares? That actually is love. I know it sounds like Tomer's saying, well, <laughs> that is loving. That, that idea of it doesn't freaking matter Feeling worthless is unconditional. There's nothing to do. As soon as I said that, that's love. As soon as you say, no, go do this. Read this book. Journal this. Da, 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 da. That is pain. That is anguish. That is... <laughs> I know. It was the way out of the jail cell, which sounds so entrapping, but it was actually the opposite. It's freedom. There's nothing to do. And as soon as I said that, I was in love. The energy of love. Wow. And then, yeah, then I, and it's not like, oh, Tomer doesn't feel like crap. But no, I do. Right. But all of these little ingredients that have come, one, it's because I've been practicing following my excitement. Moment, moment, da 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 da, follow what excites me a little bit more without any conditional outcome. I started doing this and I wasn't getting like, I was looking for Felt's revenue to go up and it wasn't. And I was like, God, oh, it's not working. I'm like, wait a second. Geez, I didn't even realize. It. But I was doing this all with a conditional outcome that my life would be better. And the one rule is you can't have a condition on it. You just do it because you do it.
Right. So then I was like, wow, okay, cool. I didn't even realize I was doing the conditionality. Okay. Now I'm going to just follow my excitement and watch out for the conditionality ego trip to come in. And when it does, I'll just realize that it's there and it won't be doing that anymore. So you got to follow your excitement moment to moment with no condition. With no con- and, and then what I realized recently actually was like, I like it. What do I mean by that? I mean, like, like you said, everything changes, changes all the time. So do I care what the, what the outcome is? The outcome one day is I make a million dollars. The outcome next day is I lose a million dollars. The outcome one day is I'm, I'm a millionaire and I'm so freaking unhappy. The outcome the next day is I'm a millionaire. I'm joyful. Like it all doesn't, it, it, it's all moving pieces Every all the time. Different, right? Every day is different. But if, if in the moment I'm following what excites me, well, maybe that's all that actually indicates like kind of a worthwhile life. Yeah, I like Is, that. Yeah, if, if in the moment I'm doing what excites me, I mean, and everything changes, then who, who is to say anything else other than in the moment right now, like I'm pumped about being here with you, obviously. <laughs> so I, like right now we're doing what excites us. Correct. I love to talk to people and I'm learning. I, one of the reasons I do it is I'm learning from them as well, right? Because I'm continuing, you got to be open to that. And I love that you're reflecting, you know, you've learned to reflect and to help you move forward each, each moment. And I've done, I've, I'm a believer in that too, about being in the moment. I think that's important. That'll help you get through tough, mo- tough times, <laughs> right? Is that the right word? And My thing that gets me excited is being around dogs. That's why I have dogs. So, but everybody, not everybody likes dogs, but they, for some reason, make me excited. Right? I don't. Yeah. (laughs) That's something that maybe I had an experience as a child. Maybe. I don't know. We all have some stuff from our childhood that erupt or comes out in our adulthood. And what do you think, before we wrap it up here, is the Maybe the one main takeaway for the listeners on your experience in life. Because we Well, it's obviously talk. go download felt and send a card. I love it. <laughs> I want takeaway. Go download felt. Send right, a card. Go, no. go download. Oh, yeah, go download felt. Send a card to somebody. And why? Is because the person receiving it is going to feel special to yes. you. And if we do that millions of times. Well, then what do we have is a million people feeling special to one and another, to each other. I mean, and, and so that that lights me up. I think we should all do that sincerely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 why better than a text? Because felt cards show up in real life. A text is cool. I have this, this knowing about social media and digital in general is that it goes miles and miles and miles wide, but only about an inch deep. Right. A text comes, it hits hard because my credit card was charged by something because an email popped in because I got pickups my school pop-up right, reminders. Right. So right. it goes an inch deep. You get this because everything is on digital, right? Which is cool. It's convenient. It's all these different things. But again, texts come in and then they vanish immediately. But a felt card, which I have right here, you know, a felt card lasts right it stays in my physical environment yeah so this is actually what a felt card looks like uh, this is a single panel you can actually build up to four of these together into one card okay. and you know that was handwritten at the bottom there that's cool yeah that is so really- so yeah send a felt card because they show up in the real life people get to love them hold them and ultimately they're feeling like they matter to you and actually on our envelopes now yeah, I'm going to cover up this return address. But on the envelopes, we have a, a heart QR code that we just started adding. Oh, that's a good it idea. Says, it says right next to it. Let's read that. But it says, scan to send one back for free. Yeah. Oh, so now. Spread the, spread the word. Right? And get cards going back and forth. Right. We want. So if you send a card to me, now I want felt people to be able to send cards back to each other. Because sending one takes time and effort. And you know you're doing something good. Right. And that's amazing, but getting a felt card, 
That's stupendous. So I want you, who the senders, to also receive them back from people, from your friends, and tighten those knowing that you matter to each other. So that's that's why Ishigo Yusufelt, that's my deal. Um, you can also follow my podcast on YouTube or Spotify, where I um, where I just kind of talk on a daily basis about what's going on and how things are and, and what I'm learning and um, feel like sharing that day. So the, the best URL to go to is feltapp.com, I'm assuming? Yeah, best. Yep, go find our website. We're on Instagram. You can also download the app on the app stores, um, both Apple and Android. That is so cool. And I very, very insightful. And we have more in common than I realized the way you were talking. And um, it, it validate. I feel a little bit more validated because I have a lot of those thoughts, but I don't share them publicly. Um, but that's really cool. This is, we learn so much from each other um, when we get to talk. And now I'm going to go get the felt app and start sending to people. <laughs> and um, thanks for having me. This has been great. This has been awesome. Thank you again.